Hey guys, it's me, Crazy Hunter Chris, your sales consultant here at Randy Kill Honda in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And here behind me, I have a 2024 Honda Civic LX sedan. Let's get going. All right, so here we are right outside the vehicle, guys. We're gonna walk up here to the window sticker. You're welcome to pause the video right about there if you wanna explore on your own. Now, you guys can see right here, the 2024 Civic. There's gonna be a sedan, it's an LX trim. So this is your entry level from there, all right? Now you can see up on the top right hand corner talks about the fuel economy. So you got 31 for the city, 40 for the highway with a combined of 35. Down on the right hand corner is going to talk about your safety ratings. So you see it's almost five out of five. Who doesn't love that? All right up here you can see where the vehicle's made at, the price point, the retail price, and then we got all the standard features and functions right up here. We're going to try to cover every single one of these here for you guys so you guys be fully aware, okay? Now this could be a platinum white pearl. You can see this is a plus charge for that particular color. I will also throw some additional color options up there so you guys be fully aware of it and there's gonna be a surplus charge for that color too before arriving at your local Honda dealership now I'm trying to hide a little bit from the wind so bear with me guys it's pretty windy today it comes standard with two key fobs as we step here towards the front you have a 2.0 four-cylinder non-turbo engine with the CVT I'm gonna throw a horsepower and torque up there so you know what you're playing around with now safety features you have plenty of them in here for the entry level you got your lane keep assist, adaptive cruise, your forward collision and road departure and traffic jam assist, rear seat reminder. You also have the traffic sound recognition system. It's going to warn you when you're speeding. Great thing about Honda, they allow you to customize all of your safety features. You want all the beeps, none of the beeps, stuff like that, including the sensitivity. Now, you guys can see the wipers underneath the hood line. You got LED lights all the way around. That means your headlights, your taillights, and then your daytime running lights, okay? Now we're gonna step here off to the side of the vehicle. You're gonna see the nice steel cap over here. I'm gonna take a step back so you see a side profile of the vehicle too as well. I'm gonna throw some exterior measurements up there so you guys know how it compares to other cars out there in the market. Then also to you guys' current vehicle, will it fit in the garage or not? Let us know down below in the comments, okay? Now as we're done looking at that, you can see a body color handles. You got a little bit of chrome action up there on the top of the windows. Body color side mirrors, the mirror, okay? Now these side mirrors are going to be a breakaway side mirror, so if you need to pull these bad boys in, that's not a problem, just simply push. If you bump anything, it pulls right back out, just pop it right back in place. Now as we get over here to the gas cap, when the car is unlocked, it's a capless gas tank, simply push in the door, it pops right open. It's a simple slide and go. Then when you shut the car, you hit the lock button, and guess what, that's all locked right up for you. Now we're going to step here towards the back of the vehicle. Once again, you get those LED tail lights. It makes it both same as you're applying to the brakes for safety, of course. You got a little badge of honor right up there. It's going to be Civic. And then we have a multi-angle rear camera. You're going to have a trunk release button right there. Simply unlocks it for you so you can get into that. And then there we go. Plenty of spaces happens. As life happens. Challenge accepted. You get all the cargo you need. If you want to take down that bench, you can. There's a lever right here. Spare tire. Jack tools stuff like that you may need capless funnel emergency funnel you're set for success now what i like about the civics is the insulation the padding they have in here to so help reduce that road noise for the passengers in the back seat or you don't have to hear all that stuff bouncing around that's in the trunk okay now if you accidentally whoops drop your key you shut the door it senses you left your key in the trunk so you cannot accidentally lock your keys in the trunk now we're going to step here off to the side before we dive in right in here, I'm going to throw some interior measurements so you guys know what we have room for for your, all of your friends, pet, cargo, or whoever's brave enough to tag along with you. Once again, challenge accepted. You're good to go. We'll come right in here now. You can see we have cloth armrests, power windows, some additional cubby space down below, and then we got your cloth interior. Now you're going to have some airbags. It's going to be right here. you got your current airbags too as well. So you have plenty of airbags going on here. I have all season mats in here. So you can see how nice laser cut tight fit these bad boys are with a high wall. They don't come standard with the car, but I definitely encourage you guys to get those. All right. Now your seat belt anchors are right in here. They're going to be marked so they're easy to find. Of course, you're going to have some options on it up here on top too as well. So you can go between all three seats. All right. And there we go. That's pretty much going to be the back. Now we're going to open up the driver's side door. Once again, we're going to check out the door here quick. You have a cloth armrest, power windows. You got your power locks, mirror selectors, and then the D-pad to adjust accordingly. Then you got your window lock button. Just in case any young whippersnappers or misbehaved husband like myself is playing around with windows, you can lock them out. 
You got some additional cubby space down below. Then you got your trunk release right there. Now we're gonna come right up here. You can have manual seats. You got your pump action to raise and lower, recline, then squeeze bar right up there to slide forward and back. Of course, you got your pedals to A and B, then the hood release from right here. So let's pop that bad boy and I'll show you some little things that are underneath the hood, okay? And here we are, right underneath the hood. We already talked about some of the stuff that's under here, but let's point out some of the little things you may do on your own. For example, the washer fluid, a nice blue cap, easy to find. Then, what else is easy to find? The dipstick, right over here is a bright orange. You can see that between day and night. You get the oil cap right there. Cooling cap, right over here. And then, we'll come over here. The battery is nice, easily exposed. If you ever need to access that, you can. Brake fluid, then the fuse box, okay? So, those are the little things you may do in your guys' zone. If you have more of those advanced questions, contact your local Honda Service Center. I'm sure they'd be glad to assist you guys from that point, okay? Now, let's show you guys one more look over here for those that have the capabilities to work on their own car. And know where all these goodies are down below. And then there we are. Now, you know what? Let's jump back up front. All right, so here we are right inside the Civic now. Simply have the key fob with you guys right here in the vehicle. It could be in the cup holder, your pocket, your purse, your jacket, just somewhere in the vehicle. Now, from there, we're going to simply apply into the brake pedal. We'll see the button turn white. We'll smack that button, and then you'll see it turn on, and the button turns red to let you know the car is on and running. We'll come right up here to the bottom left-hand side of the steering wheel. we got some cool buttons over here. we got your vehicle stability assist. If you ever need to disable that, you can. Then you got some little buttons right here, so when you select that, to turn off some of your safety features on the fly. So, for example, you got your forward collision. It's going to be right down here below, and then you also got to have your road departure. Now, how to select those items, I'm just using this little wheel action then to disable it or enable i'm just pushing in the wheel then you'll see from there it's off no check mark and you see some of the features are on some of them aren't because the icon had changed from fully green to a little gray a little green if i disable everything it'd be all grayed out so i'm going to turn everything back on so when the next person take this out for a test drive they can choose what they want from their experience everything now to back out of that you just simply just hit the home button right here or you can scroll up and hit the back button from there all right now we're going to take a look here at the steering wheel. Before we do that, we're going to honk the horn. I got the window down a little bit. Let's honk in a three, two, one. That's the horn for the Civic. Now come over here on the right hand side. We got some safety features. So we have this icon, as you select this icon, you're gonna match it one right up there. That's gonna be for you guys' is cruise control and your adaptive cruise control. Right now, what's selected is gonna be your adaptive cruise because we got a speeder meter with an arrow and then a car in front of it. Now, if you hit that button, you see this icon, it's just your standard cruise, all right? So I'm gonna assume you guys know what standard cruise control is. Now, your adaptive cruise control is gonna be what keeps you at sync with you and the car in front of you. So what I mean by that, let's say you have your cruise control set to 45 miles an hour. You can set the distance between you and the car in front of you. I'll show you guys that in a second. That car in front of you is going, let's say 42 miles an hour. That finds a car in range. The car would beep at you. You can turn that beep on or off, by the way, and will slow you down to maintain your distance with that car. So that's what I mean by a sync. Now, once they get out of the way, whoop, off to the side, boom, you resume back to your set cruise control speed from there so it's pretty nice now that's going to be pretty much it now how to set the distance is going to be this button right here so you're going to do a little tap rule as i'm tapping that you see some lines up there that's going to be us setting the distance so more lines means further less lines means you can be closer to that car in front of you now to switch between your adaptive cruise control and your standard all you have to do is click and hold this button down for a few seconds there we go holding then you'll see it switches right there that's it pretty nice easy now to set your cruise control all you have to do is this toggle switch just toggle down you can toggle up and down to adjust your speeds you can hit cancel if you want to cancel it from there now the next safety feature is going to be two of them here with this button again it's going to be your traffic jam assist and then your lane keep assist what are those those are going to be the ones that keeps you in the center of your lane so if you grab your lane a little bit it will beep bait you can turn that on or off but then also nicely brings you back and puts you in the center of your lane. You should not be playing ping pong with this. It does a really good job. I know that other makes out there that does a little back and forth ping pong playing. All right. Now your traffic jam assist is for your city driving. You go, it works between 25 to 45 miles an hour while your lane keep assist works more for your highway driving between 45 to 90 miles an hour. All right. So, so when you hit this button, if you guys guess an imagine icon, you guys are good. Right up there, we get a mention icon to let you know it's available. Now, when it's actively working, you'll see that indicator up there. It'll turn green and from there. So, you get a visual confirmation when it's working. 
So that's going to be pretty much your Honda sensing features right up here on this side. We're going to come right up here to your wipers. It's pretty nice, a nice stick. Pull up to miss, pull down from that point to adjust as you guys can see. We'll come over here. You got your lights. You got your turning indicators. Pretty nice and easy. And then we'll come over here to the left hand side of the steering wheel. Now we got your volume controls, toggle up and down. You can go between your different sources. When your phone's paired, you can use voice command like, hey, call crazy Honda Chris on mobile phone, stuff like that. Switch between your radio stations and you guys are good to go. Then the home menu to back out. Now, what you're gonna do is gonna actually scroll through some of the stuff on the left hand side of your driver's interface so you guys can see all the goodies that are gonna be in there. Now, to help you guys out a little bit, as I'm playing around with this stuff here, I'm going to be using this little wheel action to scroll up and down. I'm pushing in the wheel to select these items and to back out. I'm just hitting the home button, okay? So, I'm going to give it right back up in here so you guys can see all the goodies. First one, as we push in the wheel, is going to be fuel and range. So, right now, with a full tank of gas, you guys can see I got 387 miles before going empty. This is all computer generated. So, this is based on the last 17 miles that this car has went on. Um, so it will be different for you guys versus what it is right now just because it learns from your driving habits and then it just computerized and generates all that for you, okay? Now, you guys will see down below there's going to be a graph right here, 0 to 90. That's going to be your lifetime fuel economy that you're getting. It's going to fluctuate as you're driving so you can visually see what you're getting roughly for your fuel economy. Now, as I scroll down this little wheel once again, you'll see down there between trip A and B, and you can reset these bad boys. If I want to go to B, I push in that wheel. And then we'll hit reset. Then there we go. That's done and over with. Now I'm going to hit the home button. We're going to scroll down to speed and time. You got A and B once again. Now all kind of sync together when I reset it. And then we're going to back out. Driver's attention monitoring system. The car knows when you're doing a really good job at driving versus the wind blowing you around and when you're doing a bad job at driving, okay? So it knows the difference between all three. So let's say if you're doing a really terrible job at driving because you've been on the road for a very long time and you need to pull over and take a nap, the car is going to encourage you. It would notice the difference. It'll give you a, little cup, a cup of coffee icon right up there and it says, hey, pretty much just time to pull over and take a break there, buddy. Seat belts. So you can see where people are sitting and not wearing seatbelts. For example, we got two of the seatbelts plugged in in the back. No one's back there, but we have them plugged in. You'll see it's a nice little green. I'm over here in the driver's seat. No seatbelt on from there, so it's a red X. Then when people are not sitting down and no seatbelts plugged in, you'll see a little grayed out area. So if I plug in the seatbelt right now on the passenger front passenger, if I can grab it. In three, two, one. It's pretty nice and responsive. Then also will alert you when people unbuckle too. We'll have the back button from there. Maintenance. Anything regarding for maintenance is going to be underneath maintenance. Safety supports. We already kind of talked about a little bit about this. Just another way to get in here. We're going to scroll down to settings. Now, once again, I do have a vehicle settings that go into this more in depth. So when you guys drive off the lot, you guys are set for success. You know how to do everything that's right in here. You can customize your little display action if you want to. Like if you want to clean up some of the clutter, like you don't use certain things, you can disable those. But I'm going to keep everything on for the next person so they can decide. Now content right here. So this is where you can change your speed distance. If you want to go from miles per hour to kilometers, you can. You just simply push in and hold the wheel action on the driver's interface. Or if you just want nothing up there, you can. Warnings. You guys know if doors are open, stuff like that. Then we're back to fuel and range. Now, i also like to take a moment to actually show you guys the layout on the driver's interface here quick where to find things at. So, we're going to have your speed meter right here. We have a digital speed meter right there. We already talked about the safety features, miles on the vehicle. It is 77 degrees outside. It's actually pretty nice out there with a the nice cold breeze, but that's your outside temperature. We're in park. Your gas tank, it's right here. It's the Hershey bars is what you're looking at, right? Not the little red line. So, let's say if it's a half tank, you guys nailed it. Half of those bars are going to be gone if it's a half tank of gas. We've got the time down below right over there, and then we already talked about what's on the left-hand side. Another common question is, Chris, where is the temperature gauge? Guys, there's no gauge. There's a light, okay? So if the engine's hot, there's a red light. If the engine's cold, there's going to be a blue light out there that comes up there. It's just they're trying to clean up this clutter um, from that point and not overwhelm you with a whole bunch of stuff on there, all right? 
So that's gonna be pretty much the layout of the driver's interface. Now, cool thing too, you will have your traffic sign recognition system. So as you're driving down the road, that front camera is gonna find the speed limit sign and throws it right up there for you guys. So you guys will be aware of that. Now from here, we're gonna come over there on the touch screen. You have a seven inch touch screen here. Okay, I can see what's going on. So you got your volume control, you got on and off for your radio, pretty much nice and easy, straightforward. You got your little tuner action, just kind of turn that bad boy. If you push it in here, then you can scroll up and down and find your radio stations a little quicker, or you can simply do it right here on the touch screen. Now you can skip between your radio stations too as well. So I'll like skip to the next, let's find it. There we go, so pretty nice and easy. You got your phone, if you can pair up your phone, multiple phones, you can set one as a priority. So pretty much when one's a priority, it takes that calls that come in while the other one, when it's paired, it's not a priority, it will not take those incoming calls, okay? So one at a time. Radio, we already talked about radio a little bit, but let's do it again, you got FM. You got AM radio from here. And when you guys find a radio station that you guys like and enjoy, just simply click and hold from there. There's a random one. It's that easy to save them, okay? Media, you don't have a CD player. That's fine. I had Some people have issues with that. I have encouraged them to look online. You can buy a USB plug-in CD player. Simply plug it into the USB. There we go. And you're good to go, okay? So check those out online. Now, we also have Bluetooth capabilities. You can use like your smartphone or other devices are capable using Bluetooth. You can pair it up. So if you've got any music, stuff like that on there, you're good to go again, okay? Now, when you come back to the USB thing, you can download your books, your tapes, other stuff onto your flash drive. So you have a whole bunch of stuff on one flash drive. So you don't need a whole bunch of CDs and stuff, clutter, wherever you're going to store them, okay? So that's going to help clean things up a little easier for you. Now, we're also going to have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's going to take like your compatible apps and then your Google Maps or Apple Maps and displays it on you guys' touch screen. It's a plug and play. So plug in your phone charger into your phone, then plug it in right here. All right. So it's pretty nice and easy. Um, it plays through the vehicle while charging your device. So awesome. I can see a lot of people using that feature. Okay. Now I get a little back button here so and a little menu action. So we're going to just quickly give you a quick little visual what's in the menu option. And there's not too much to talk about. I'm sure you guys can figure it out from there. Now we're going to have the time right up top. Let me turn that off. There we go. So time. What I like about this, when I'm playing around with this stuff, I got a nice little ledge right up here. We're going to back up here quick. We're going to take a moment at the dashboard so you can see what all the vents are. So that one's going to be your guys'. These bad boys are going to click once you kind of get them in the center with the direction the vent's going. That's going to be open, close. We'll come right over here so you guys can see how wide these vents are. They're actually pretty big, okay? So we're going to argue about these vents, who's going to get what. This one's obviously mine because you guys can't reach it. So it's open, nice soft touch, and it closed from there. Come back open. Hazard lights, if you ever need those bad boys, there they are. Hopefully you guys never will. Now we're going to come down here to your climbing controls, all right? So with your climb controls, you got the temperature right here. You can see it changing right up there as I'm doing that. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it has a nice good click each time I turn this bad boy. Then you got your fan speed. You can see it right there changing on and off. Then you got your different modes. I love the clicking of the buttons. I don't know why that's pretty big. Then you have an auto button right there. So when you select that, the car's gonna do everything in its power to automatically try to maintain that temperature and the vehicle, all right? Now we're gonna have your air circulation, front defroster, rear defroster, and AC. So if you kind of play around these buttons, you'll see all that kind of come on. Focus camera, there we go. We'll come down below, you'll see a USB plug-in, a 12-volt plug-in, and then we have a nice deep tray action going on up there. It'd be great to hide in at some corners, you know, from Cameron, because he sits all the way back there. You'll see him, though. I'm sure he will. Now, we have a nice little texture going on right back here. Cup holders. Lights will come right on for where gear you guys are in. There we go. We can see it. So, you have a park, reverse, neutral drive. You have an S mode and a low gear drive. So when I simply put up my foot on the brake, I come down to reverse, there it is. You'll see it right up there too. So it goes from red, white, red, white, 
and there we go. S, and there we go. So we can see all the cool goodies. All right, so when you put the vehicle into reverse, yes, your backup camera automatically displays right here. And then on the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see the load photos. It'll actually buttons. They're going to show you how the camera's going to act, okay? So this is a nice 180 view. Catches more of your blind spot. This is great in the parking lot when cars are coming from the side. It catches them a little quicker for you. And then this is going to be more of a straight behind your view, okay? I mean, that is pretty sharp because look at that. The end of that car is right there about the end with mine. So, pretty nice. So, that's going to be there. That's right behind your view. Then, that's going to be more of a straight down shot from your rear bumper view. So, when you're backing up, you can see how close you're getting to something from there. All right, we're going to put that bad boy right back in park. So, your drive is just a standard drive. You have an S mode, change up the gear ratio. It's going to be great for going up hills, stuff like that. Then, you have a low gear drive too, as well um, for those really steep hills and stuff. Now we have an econ mode. When you smack the econ mode, and there we go, you get a nice beautiful green leaf that comes up to let you know it's on. And then you can see the little thing going on there for a second. So econ's gonna make you more fuel efficient, mostly effective for your highway driving, okay? Uh, how is it gonna do that? It uh, changes, it nerfs the power of your acceleration and nerfs the power of your AC power with some electrical power up front. All right, so you're sacrificing a couple things to help you maximize your fuel economy for your highway driving. Because with city, you're consistently stopping going. Highway, you're just on cruise and you're get going. You may see anywhere from two to four more miles per, to per gallon, depending on how aggressive you guys are driving and what time, you know, winter and summer driving. That all plays in effect. Um, so yeah, that's the econ mode. You just gotta choose on those really hot summer days. Do you wanna be a fuel efficient or do you wanna be comfortable? Now you guys have idle stop. I know there's a lot of mixed feelings out there about idle stop. For those that don't know what idle stop is, it's just every time you get to a complete stop with the vehicle, when you're idling for a second, the car meets a requirement like the temp is to where it needs to be at, the engine's good and all that, it, boom, shuts off the vehicle while you have your foot down on the brake. Now as soon as you let your foot off the brake, it starts right up just like that before you apply into the gas. So it's pretty nice and responsive. My wife hates it. Me, I don't mind it that much. But she comes in and she smacks this bun every time she gets into the car because it makes her worried. And then you can see it is off. We have electrical parking brake from there. It is on. Now to disable that, you can't just push it in. You simply have to apply into the brake pedal and then push it in. Hold brake, I have a video to show you guys how that works in action. So every time you get to a complete stop, it holds the brake pedal down until you apply into the gas for you. Armrests, got a little tray action going on right here. You can switch it around deep enough so I can hide all my goodies in here. And then we're coming right over here to the glove box. And there it is, deep enough, challenge accepted. You throw whatever you guys want in there, you'll forget about it. I know I do. You got your rear view mirror, little light action. You got these right over here. So if you put it in the center, and you open up a door, this light will come on. You can have it off. You can turn it on from there. From there is my favorite words so far. All right, we'll come right over here. Visor check. And that also adjusts. And there it is, guys. That's going to be the Honda Civic LX. Uh, I do have the other videos out there too that's going to show you the higher trim levels where you're gaining. So if this was helpful and you want to see the next level up, check those out. And consider hitting the like and subscribe. Leave a good comment down below. It really helps me out. Okay, guys? Well, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.